Hello everybody, this is Albert with Green Tea House. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're gonna to talk about our Golden Poor. Now before we begin, I highly recommend you check out our back catalog of episodes, in particular the Fundamentals of Tea playlist, and also I'll put in some important banners up above that are germane to this one. So Poor Tea is a tea that I think is, for those who know tea, maybe misrepresent this tea as being a black tea, and it's not a black tea. So we do have an episode on the six categories of tea that come from the Camellia sinensis plant. And we do have an, a standalone episode on what is Puwer tea. We also have an episode on what is Tuwocha, which is related to this because Tuwocha uh, are typically Puwer teas that are shaped into uh, different shapes. So we have uh, the cakes, the tea cakes, those are typically Puwer, and also the bird's nest, or smaller ones, and there's different other shapes as well. So the Puwer that we sell is golden puer. No, what is puer? Just in case you don't want to go back to those those past episodes. So puer, in, in its shortest definition, is a fermented dark tea. So it goes through a lot of the other stages that you see with the other teas that come from the Camellia sinensis plant. Particularly, I'd say it's probably close as related to like black tea, in that it's going to be plucked, it's going to be keel grained, it's going to be rolled, it's going to be broken down, uh, and then it's eventually going to be dried. But after it's dried, they do a thing called piling. And in, in the process of piling these leads, it leads to a, a secondary breakdown. But it's a different type of breakdown that you would see in black tea or in oolong and other teas. It's, it's, a, it's a breakdown that causes fermentation. So the, the bacteria and the fungus that's naturally endogenous to the leaves, like, I mean, like there's bacteria and fungus all on us. 90% uh, of the cells in us and on us are not human. So all of us have a microbiome on our skin and in our gut. Plants are no different, animals are no different. So what happens with, with puer tea, which is a type of dark tea, probably the most famous one, it's from the Yunnan province of China, is that the teas when they're piled or i'm sorry the leaves once they're piled up on top of each other undergo fermentation so uh, the best way to understand poor tea is that it's fermented tea leaves so it's probiotic it's similar to what you would see in kimchi or kombucha or kefir or some of the things you know probiotics are pretty po popular right now so yes it is a drink now it, how is it different than kombucha so kombucha is another probiotic drink that's from black tea that's left out and then a, a, its own kind of microbiota its own scoby is developed and you add sugar and so forth but that that is with interaction of sugar here in puer there's no sugar involved it's the natural fermentation of the leaves when they're piled on top of each other and that's what undergoes the process so sometimes you'll even find people that sell tea call puer a fermented black tea. That's a misnomer. It's not a fermented black tea. It's its own category of teas, which are called dark teas. In America, they would call them dark teas. So that's what puer is. And again, as I mentioned, puer is typically grown in southern China and the Yunnan province. Also, the interesting thing about puer is that even though the Camilla sinensis sinensis variety of, of, of that plant is grown predominantly in China, Puer is mostly made from the Camellia sinensis Asamica variant, which is the same variant that is probably most famous for the black teas that come from India, like that you would get um, chai tea or an Earl Grey or so forth. Now, in terms of the golden puer that we sell, Puer can be categorized into two greater categories. There's going to be the kind of raw puer and the ripe puer. The raw puer is one that goes natural fermentation. So it, it's, it's, I guess, most akin to wine in that it's just left out and it just ferments on its own. Then you have the ripe pour, and the ripe pour undergoes an acceleration process. The tea masters know how to accelerate it into a ripe pour. So any pour that you buy online, I shouldn't say any, but the majority of pour that you buy online is going to be ripe pour because it's just faster to make it and they're faster to get to the market. So any pour that we sell here is going to be part of that ripe pour. So in the pour family, there's going to be flavor profiles that are different. So you're going to have, oh, for lack of a better adjective, 
lighter pours in terms of taste and darker pours in terms of taste. Now for those who are looking to maybe either wean off of coffee or maybe you wanna drink a tea that tastes like coffee, at least in China, pu'er would be your go-to. In, in Japan, I'd say it'd be more like hojicha, which is roasted uh, tea leaves. But in, in the China world, for lack of a better word, it'd be the, the pu'ers because the pu'ers have a very strong, robust, and you can taste to a certain extent the ferment in this, the fermentation in it. So if you're looking to go from coffee to something that mimics the taste of coffee in the tea world, even though they're completely separate, right? The coffee comes from the Arabica bee mostly, and tea, of course, comes from, comes from Camellia sinensis, then pu'er would be your taste. So in the pu'er world, we have lighter pu'er and we have darker. So lighter is gonna be like a lighter roast, if you wanna use a coffee analogy, and then the darker pu'ers would be a darker roast. The golden pu'er that we sell, I would say, is more on the darker. It's more on the darker. There are lighter varieties, but the one we sell, which we will always sell, is the Golden Pu'er. That's more of a stronger, darker blend of the Pu'er. And on occasion, we might sell seasonably or here and there, or if we ever go to brick and mortar, we'll, we'll sell different types of Pu'er. For example, there is a lighter Pu'er that, you can, that, that we might sell. There's also a ginger Pu'er, so it's Pu'er that they put ginger in as well. And of course, as I've mentioned before, they you can find ginger, uh, I'm sorry, puer tuocha. So you can find puer that's already in the shape of a bird's nest. And so you just pop it in your kiyusu or your kettle or whatever, and you pour in the water, and then it opens up into the leaves. There's a lot of varieties. And of course, the most famous of the puers would be the cakes. So and then with those, you just break off a piece and throw it in your, and throw it in your kettle. So how do you, how do you make puer? I would tell you in terms of steeping, it really depends. And I guess, you know, there's a wide variety of, of arguments that you'll find on, on either side. Uh, we talk about it on that episode of what temperature should you steep your particular teas. I would say as a whole, the, the, the best way to steep your pour is it's, it's better to go too hot than not hot enough. So I would say minimally, if it's, if it's, a, if it's a raw pour, like the one that's just naturally ferments, uh, you can maybe go 190, but the majority of pours that you're going to find on the market are going to be uh, the ripe pours, and I would say at least 200 degrees, if not full boil. It doesn't really hurt the 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 ripe pours to do them too hot. So if you want to do a full boil on a pour, that's totally fine. And as always, one session is three steeps. Actually, with pour, you could probably do four steeps of three minutes each, and even in the fourth steepage. Um, you're still going to get a good flavor profile. So go hot with it. So in closing, pu'er, fermented. It's got bugs, fungus, so to speak, bacteria on it. It's fermented. It's a dark tea. It has a strong taste that mimics coffee. It does have caffeine in it. And again, in, in the grand scheme of tea land, even the tea that you find in, in tea is, is pretty much half of what you would find in coffee. And also, as we talked about on that episode on caffeine, there's theanine, which is found in tea leaves, which steadies the release of, of caffeine in the tea plant. So unlike coffee, where you get that, that jittery spike sometimes, and then maybe you get a crash, with the tea leaves, it gives you theanine, an enzyme that's found in tea leaves, gives you more of a steady alertness throughout the day. But definitely pu'er has caffeine. Steep it at about 200 to 212 and do it several sessions. Guys, post in the comments what's your experience with Pure. Until next time, take care. God bless.